God's children ought to always have a strong desire to do the things of God. They ought to always have a strong desire to serve. It's amazing when you come in a congregation, you ask, no matter how many there are or how few, what are 20 or 2,000? And you say, we need someone to do such and such a thing. And you spend 10 minutes. And they're there looking at you. It's a shame. It's a shame. They ought to be jumping up. Even the people of the Old Testament. When Moses called them and said, look, you're going to give an offering for the building of the tabernacle. We're going to make vessels for the worship of the king. That's God. So, they began to bring, they were giving so much, they were giving so much. They gave so much, according to the Bible, that Moses had to give an instruction to stop them from giving more offerings. Those are people that didn't even have the kind of salvation that we have. So, is anyone here, we just need five people give 10,000. That's when they, they sit down. And then they, they, they say, no, 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 all the time you're talking, no, 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 don't want to hear any suggestion, it's you, no, 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 God's people should always be ready to be involved in works of service, you can't come into the church and say, well, I don't know what I'm doing, you look at certain things, they are dusty, you come in on Wednesday, the dusty. You come in on Sunday, the same thing. Doesn't that tell you something? Instead of saying, who is responsible for this thing? That's God opening a door blessing for you. Look, anything you do in the house of God turns out to be a blessing to you. See, how does it bless you? It's not that, you know, he, he, he tells you, don't worry, heaven is your home. That's not just it. There are things you desire in this life. See, there are certain things that you need. Sometimes there are even things you don't realize. And God begins to open doors of blessings for your life. Because of that thing that you need. Different attitudes. One comes in and he says, who's responsible to clean these chairs? Can you imagine if I had known that the thing was dead? I would have come with my own rag to clean it. And he's looking for another chair. He's angry. Another one notices that it was dusty last week. It's dusty again. He says, I think I've found something to do in the house of God. I found something to do in the house of God. He takes up a responsibility. He doesn't have to come up and say, Pastor, I want to volunteer myself to be cleaning the chairs now. He doesn't even have to say that. No, he doesn't have to say that. Just come in and begin to clean. Begin to clean. Or you come in Sunday. There's water at the entrance. And then everybody is finding a better way. They come in like this and then they enter. Everyone who comes in, you know, they make that cough, leave the water. Or some, you know, go like that and then they enter the church. See? See that place is always like that. See, one that understands that we serve the Lord Christ. We're going to see it here. He will come in there and clean the place. He won't say, who are those? Is there no maintenance department in this church at all? He won't talk like that. Let me ask you a question. We are all serving God here. Every one of us. This is not my church. And it's not somebody's church. It's God's church. And for the sake of organization, we have people in one place or the other. But we're all answerable to God the same way. I said to the, the leaders on Sunday, was it Sunday? We had a meeting Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I said, irrespective of what you do, you don't need somebody to come and say thank you. You don't. We're in the house of God anyway. I don't, as a pastor, I don't have to come and tell you, thank you. You did a good job. Who did you do it for? Me? If you did it for me, you're wrong. We'll sit here. When you've done it, you do it as unto the Lord. You don't need me to say thank you. And if I don't say thank you, don't get offended. You may do all such things and nobody recognizes you. But what does it matter? This is not the world. Are you still there? 
This is not the word. Don't say, well, I've been doing it. Nobody ever said thank you. Or we have the awards night. And then we recognize certain people. And nobody recognizes you. And then you know some folks, they're so canal. They come to you and say, ah, brother, they didn't even call your name. <laughs> and he said, I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it at all. Well, that's man's own. God sees. Yes, God sees. But you don't have to say it that way. <laughs> Praise God. God sees. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, I want to read to you from verse 23. He says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Come on, somebody say heartily. heartily. Say it again. Heartily. heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. You know, I read a story one time. A, a man had a guy who married his daughter. And he called his son-in-law and said to him, I want you to go and be with me the best house in town. And gave him enough money. And said, build me the best house in town. I want to live in the best house in town. And the son-in-law got the money and went, purchased poor materials, weak materials, cheap, and got cheap labor and built a structure and came back to his father-in-law and said, I've done it. The father said, is it the best building in town? Oh yeah, tremendous, oh yeah, the best you could have paid for yeah all right he said where are the keys he brought the keys then he said thank you you've done a great job now you take these keys that's your house i just wanted to do something for you and instead of going Woo! he went oh see he was doing it for himself and he didn't know it he was doing it for himself. That's what I tell you. Whatever you do for the Lord, really, when you do it, it's for you. Because the blessing is going to turn to you. Let me read from, from verse 23 again. Then I'll read it down into verse 24. Verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. You're going to have an inheritance. You're going to have a reward. God's going to bless you for it. Some people, you know, there are people who have never experienced a miracle in their lives. Do you know that? There are people. The only, if you ask them, have you ever received a miracle? They say, yeah. They say, what kind? Say, well, I thank God he woke me up this morning. Mm -mm. That's not a miracle. Every dog you find woke up that day. Hallelujah. That's not a miracle. That's the normal process of life. What is a miracle? It's a supernatural intervention into the natural realm. Praise God. So that's not a miracle that you woke up. Some have never had a divine thing happen. A divine intervention in their lives that they can really talk about. Apart from when they got born again. Of course, which is great. You need to know that serving God brings to you opportunities for miracles. You should know that. Serving God. Hallelujah. Serving God promotes you. When I say it promotes you, I'm talking now of God taking your name forward. People begin to talk about you. Not just because they are seeing what you are doing. Oh, that could be a part of it. But not necessarily. Because God begins to remind them of you. The Bible talks about a book of remembrance in the presence of God. You can study that in Malachi, in the fourth chapter, the last few verses. talks about a book of remembrance. 
that has been written concerning people. And that book of remembrance is not a book that's going to be opened on the last day. No. That book is working now. God goes through that book now. And from time to time you find yourself as, you know, you're on God's top list to be blessed. Hallelujah. And miracles just begin to happen. You begin to have favor in the sight of men. You begin to have favor everywhere you go. You want to open doors of favor for yourself. Begin to serve God. Begin to do things in the house of God that are valuable. Hallelujah. Serve God. And whatever kind of service that you render, do it as unto the Lord. Do it heartily as unto the Lord. Not as unto me. Praise God. Are you still there? We return to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 7. It says, With goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Have you seen that? Have you seen it? Doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Hebrews chapter 12. I'll read verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Have you found it? He says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Hallelujah. To serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear.